I'm all right. I love it. I love to hear that. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another Cafe BTW Morning Gaming Podcast. We weren't here last week, but we're back this week for a really fun episode with a topic we have not talked about this whole time we've been doing this podcast. And we're going to be talking about pinball today. But let me introduce you to our guest, who is a friend of mine from the Twitterverse, the Twitter gaming world we met, I believe. It's Jody, the Nintendork, and also a, a really a pinball enthusiast. Jody, what's up? Good morning. Welcome. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. How are you? Uh, thanks for calling in from the East Coast today and uh, hanging out with me. Or are you considered the East Coast? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, this is the East Coast. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, used, I used to have a friend in Ohio that used to argue with me that Ohio is on the East Coast. And I'm like, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. But Pennsylvania counts, right? Yeah, Pennsylvania. Yeah. So, you, you get over to Ohio, it's like it gets a little... Uh, there's a part in Ohio where it separates. Nice. Well, uh, dude, thanks for coming on today. I think I wanted someone that was a little bit more familiar with pinball to talk about pinball. Not that I don't have a good background, but before we get into all that jazz, I want to learn a bit about you. And the first question I always ask a guest is tell us a story that really connected you to video games, whether it's video games or pinball. Like, what was it about gaming as a kid that sh struck your fancy, that got you passionate about video games? What is that story? What I want to know. Um, I would say it was about, well, let's see. It would have been about 1987. And... Down uh, where my grandmother lives in Effort of Pennsylvania, uh, down from uh, her house, there was a park that had an arcade and uh, it had, you know, arcades and pinballs and she would give us money, a little bit of money and we would go down there and we would quickly spend our dollar, dollar and 50 cents and then we would, me and my cousin would just hang out and watch people play, ask them for free, free money to play games. Was it mostly pinball or was it a mix of arcade and pinball? It was, it was probably more arcade than pinball, but there was about four, three to four pinball machines in the corner. And then they had like, they have like spy hunter. They had a play choice 10. Ooh, uh, a play choice 10. Yep. Yeah. Then, you know, the, the Nintendo Entertainment System arcade game that had 10, you know, it had 10 games on it, basically. And uh, you could pick, it would give you a time limit and you could pick uh, whichever games were loaded. And, and this is that. 1987, eh? I think it was 87, 88 around. I would have been uh, 10 or 11 years old at the time. Because I was born in 77. 77, right at the end and beginning of the arcade, 70s arcade era, I'd say, where yeah. Asteroids was in arcades. Actually, I think the 2600 came out in the late 70s too, right? The Atari 2600. That, that year, yeah, that uh, that year, 77. 77 was a big year for gaming. It was, yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, and another thing is like, what about pinball? machines like struck your fancy because it seems like you're more of a pinball enthusiast like what a, was there a connection with pinball that really drove you in or, or was it that similar story that you were just at an arcade in the 80s and was what's that connection it was uh i mean when i went to that arcade i i just basically i mean i love the arcade games too you know don't get me wrong I did, but I just like got stuck with just loving these pinball machines. It, you know, the pinball machines at the time that would have been in there. I remember them. It was Williams Taxi. It was uh, Williams High Speed. It was Williams Jokers with a with a Z. Those were those were hugely awesome games. I just loved the art and how everything worked, and it just it just. I don't know. It just like sucked me in basically. And uh, is it the, uh, cause pinball is a different experience than an arcade. Cabinet. Uh, oh yeah. I feel like pinball yeah. is more, 
it, it's a lot of hand-eye coordination because you're trying to follow the ball. You're trying to time mm-hmm. it with the flippers. But there's right. something different about it um, because it's mechanical meets electronics where, sure, an arcade machine is sort of mechanical in the sense of the joystick and the buttons. But I don't know. It's just the the beautiful beauty of a pinball machine, like the the art of of a pinball machine and the and they're valuable right if you want to buy a pinball machine from the 80s let's say i wanted to buy which one williams taxi you said how much does a williams taxi go for these days well prior to like 2019 it was a little better and now you're talking about covid prices and the coat you know everything went up after that and now you're talking probably I would guess for a good one, probably fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars. I I could be wrong. It might be. What's crazy though that. is that there's some freaking cartridge games that go for that much money now. Oh, I know. <laughs> so I that's know. the scary part. But um, yeah. There's something about pinball. Like I I love. I would always want an like an arcade cabinet in my house, but I think a pinball machine would be really interesting. Um, but right. before we get more into pinball, I want to ask you a couple more questions. You're a truck driver, right? But you know, you were yeah. a truck driver. Uh, because mm-hmm. you were a truck driver, I want to hear how did you keep your video game obsession while you were driving? <laughs> Was that something you were able to do in your cab in your truck? Do truck drivers play? I know there were used to be a truck driver on TikTok that would play like Fortnite in his truck and stuff, and. I want to know wow. what is the truck drivers at game like? How do they game? Like, what is their what's their what, walk me through that? Well, well <laughs> to tell you the truth, I never played online when I was in the truck. I mean, I guess you could tether your phone, but that you know that connection probably wouldn't be very good. I played PS2 in my truck a long time ago. Uh, But I would just play, you know, certain games that I would never play online. And either that or I would uh, I would play like the handhelds, you know, like uh, Game Boy Advance or, uh, you know, uh, DS, 3DS uh, and take those with me. Even the switch for a little for a little bit uh, when I was still kind of driving everywhere, I would take that with me. But the PS2 was fun. I I I didn't want to take any. I didn't want to take anything else other than that. It was the slim model, so it kind of fit in the the little. I have the slim uh, model still, which is a great. Yeah. It's almost it like a mini, like, a mini like NES or a mini SNES. Like that. it's really tiny. It's great. Oh yeah, yeah. And you just press the button and it pops up, and it would fit real nice in the shelf. You know, because you have shelves you know, on either side and then you have your bed in the middle and then, uh, you know, have a space for a TV. And that's so awesome. I didn't roll it. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, okay. Let's, uh, let's, we talked a little bit about you, my friend, but I want to know. Yeah. So I, I pulled up a few things and I was hoping you could help me. Uh, obviously we're talking about pinball today and, and, and if people don't know what a pinball machine is, then they probably have never been in an arcade because probably one of the most not only noticeable things, every arcade usually, even if they didn't have a lot of pinball machines, had some pinball machines, right? You had to have a pinball machine if you had an arcade, right, Jody? It wouldn't be a good arcade if there weren't at least three or five pinball machines. Am I wrong back in the day? You were yeah, back in the day. N- nowadays, you don't see them. You see ticket redemption machines, unfortunately. But, but yeah, back in the day, they had at least one. At least or one. Two. And Jan says, when I was in school around t- 2002, we had an Adams Family machine at home. I don't know the cost, but the machine, uh-huh. I think, was leased. Ultra luxury. That's a great machine. We're going to talk about that machine, that, too. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, But... Uh, Going back, and I I don't know if I'm saying this right, but I wanted to show um, a little bit of like an old version of where they kind of started, right? And this is called a bagatelle, right? And a bagatelle, Mm -hmm. can you you give me a little bit of background on, on what these are exactly? And I'm trying to go back in time on how the pinball machine evolved into what it is today. Now, from what I understand, the bagatelles had the 
the kind of like where you would shoot the ball up. What do you call it? The plunger, pretty much. Yeah. What is what is yeah. your knowledge of these these interesting wooden planks of machines here? It's called a bagatelle. Well, right. The original bagatelles uh, actually were huge. Uh, the ones in the 1800s were very big. They were like the size of a billiards table and they were just inverted. And you would, you know, it was similar to a billiards table, but it would, it would be inverted and, and it would come down and it would be the same thing as this. This here would be when they actually, they still call it a bagatelle. But then it later evolved into pinball because you see the pins on the play field there. Is and that where the handmade. idea of pinball comes from pretty much? Yes. With those pins, uh, that's where that's where it uh, started. And these were only – these did not have legs. They just sat on a tabletop. And but you had that – did you have to have them kind of arced so that the ball like Yeah, they dropped? had they, – they had legs on them, small legs, uh, but not legs like uh, you would see in an arcade now, you know, that you could stand up and play. You could stand up and play them, but they would have to be sitting on something. Um, and no flippers, you know, at that time, no flippers. It was more like it was more like, no like plung, plunge it up and watch the ball kind of come down on the pins is pretty much what it was. But the really interesting right. things is that this is the thing from the 1800s and what what is still stayed the same from a bagatelle to a modern pinball machine is the plunger. The act of pulling back that plunger and hitting the ball and sending it up. Like right. that's that's what's really cool about seeing this old machine. It's not even a machine. Right. It's really just like a piece of wood, right? Um right. with some springs. So Wanted to make sure that people know that, like, look, pinball is technically or the the act of pinball has been around since the 1800s. Um, right. And, and that. Yeah. And that uh, that uh, the flipper changed it from a game of luck to a game of skill. Right. This is a game of luck. Can... Like, what's the game for right. Price is Right? Planko. Um, yeah. Let me pull yep. that up so people can see, because that's like kind of like the same I. Is it Planko? Price is right. Um, I might trying to think. I think so. Here it is, Plinko, Plinko, Plinko. So, obviously, where is it? Let's see. She's doing the thing. Here we go. Like it's kind of the same uh, idea, but it's it's mm -hmm. it's it's not a pinball machine, but it's the idea of pins in place to distract a ball or something coming down. Now, I got right. some more photos of Bagatelles, and these, dude, I did not know these existed until I started researching. Uh, oh, yeah. look, look how beautifully made they are. Some of them are really cool. Like, right, and those are all handmade. Handmade those and beautiful. Handmade. Uh, like acids, somebody hammered the nail into the wood. Uh, because back then, there was, no, there was no mass production or anything like that. They're beautiful, though, and I wonder how much do these go for? Do you know people that actually collect these? I would imagine. I have seen some. They're they're not too too bad, depending on the rarity and things like that. A few hundred dollars uh, will get you like a a nice one that's not so rare. Wow, um, that's really neat. Yeah, and they don't take up much space. I don't have one, but I'd love to to get one but yeah i have seen them for sale at shows and stuff and then this is kind of like an evolution <laughs> of the bagatelle where they started to get a little bit more graphic with them give them a little bit oh, more yeah. life and this one actually has glass on top of it which kind of gives you that remnants of what a modern pinball machine would look like um right. acid says barcade in my area has a whole upstairs pit for pinball at least 12 machines so nice to have it included that's awesome uh, Tao, cool. Hey, Tao. Tao says, never thought of pinball as a game of skill. Very interesting. Yeah, I, I think so. I think pinball is definitely a game of skill. So what do you know about these bagatelles where they started to get a little bit more involved? And this one's really pretty, believe it or not. Like giving, well, they, it, giving it some life, I guess, right, in character. Right. They, they started adding art and actually naming them, you know different names like meteor or uh um you know all kinds of different names uh i'm trying to think 
This one's really cool. This one looks it's called five in one. And it looks yeah. like it's 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 supposed to re- it's supposed to be uh, what's it called? Um, what do they call that game on horses with the uh, polo or I forget what they call that. Um, you're on a horse and you have a stick and you hit the ball. It's like a, a rich person sport. I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah. Polo. Polo. Yeah. Right. It's just polo. Um, yeah. That's so crazy, man. So they're saying that the the bagatelle started, you know, in the mid to late 1800s, which is really mm-hmm. fascinating because I never imagined um, it would get there. So let's talk about that. How do you think you mentioned this game and it's called Humpty Dumpty 1947. So we're we're a bunch of years in the future now. And right. now we're starting to see the pinball machine Evolve. So tell me a little bit about Humpty Dumpty, which is this game we're seeing on screen. Why okay. is Humpty Dumpty one of the most important kind of games in the history of pinball? And you said it earlier, but I want to talk about it again. It's with those six flippers you see right there that, you know, it changed it completely from just watching the ball and trying to, to move it around. And then also, too, with those with those early games, you got to understand that they didn't have a tilt mechanism. So you could just cheat and like lift the table on those after Harry Williams, which was the founder of Williams, by the way, after he invented the tilt mechanism, where if you move the machine it, too much, it yells it would, at you or then tells you, stop right. that. No tilt. Yeah, would, <laughs> and, and then of course the, the, the flipper, that's the, that's probably the biggest single biggest uh invention of the, the history of pinball after that yeah after that uh it was never the same in fact you had you had older pinballs okay before the flippers were added or people companies would try to add flippers in because it was so popular that they would try to uh, screw holes and add flippers to the game that wasn't made for flippers you know what i mean oh that's interesting and, and- yeah, and I've seen some of those games, and they don't play well. <laughs> but they're neat, they're neat to look at, though. Well, yeah. uh, let me read the chat. Oh, Lost in the 80s, 90. Will, what's up, Will? Yes, it was Polo. Good to see you, Will. Thanks for coming by. First time chatter in the house. Welcome to the Cafe BTW podcast. Uh, it's virtually podcast says, I used to get these games as party favors, and water, and water, and it's fun. Add water, and it's fun. Oh, interesting. Um, so... <laughs> This is triple action, which I heard was also around the same time as Humpty Dumpty and also is starting to give life to pinball. Now, where when did lights start to be involved into a pinball machine? When did they start to think like, all right, let's start including it's not just mechanical. It's got electrical involved. Like, is this the era that it started to, to form in that sense? Yeah. Yeah, you know what? I think if I can remember correctly, I didn't get a chance to look it up, but I remember Triple Action. I think that was the first, uh, one of the first to add uh, either lights. Well, I know Humpty Dumpty had lights too, but maybe like the uh, the uh, the pop bumpers, the modern, more modern pop bumpers. That and what's a pop bu- bumper, by the way? Okay, so so the it's the the mechanism in the pinball you'll have like maybe like my my pinball has three of them okay and they're round and they say you know like two of them say 10 points when lit one of them says 100 points when oh. lit. and then the ball will hit them and it'll go pop 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 you know off of it and off of you know so you get some kind of like randomness to the ball and then it'll go down. You'll have to hit it with the flipper and it'll go back up. That's so fascinating. This, uh, and that, okay, so now we're, we're kind of moving through the era. Now we're at solid state pinball machines. What oh, does yeah. that mean, Jody? What does solid state pinball mean? So that, that was, uh, you know, prior to 1976 ish about 1977 right around the time i was born uh you had uh, you did not have um solid state which means uh you know that it was electronic you know you had circuit boards it had 
um, like a dot matrix, not a dot matrix. Would be a dot matrix display. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, so like that an LCD dot, dot matrix display, which is like it's, right. it's like Instead kind of like the of, early days of the LCD sort of thing. Um, right. So it would have reels, and the old ones they would have reels uh, for points, and they would move, and everything was mechanical. And in and at that time, solid state meant that you know it was uh, going past that point into the electronic age, you know, and it basically never stopped. And you even had, you even had old timers, you know, that hated it. They absolutely hated it. So they, there was they, like, kind of like a cultural shift and it, it upset people, right? Because they were moving oh, into yeah. putting circuit boards and pinball machines and getting away right. from the true mechanical side of it, even though pinball machines with circuit boards are still mechanical in a sense, but why do you think that was? Was it just like a love affair with the the old yeah. way? They didn't want, you know, they wanted their, they didn't want change, basically. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of them, uh, when they started doing solid state, they couldn't do just one. They had to do like, they'll do like 2000 in solid state and 500 and in electromechanical because people just they just had to have em they just had to have that electromechanical but far more sold in solid state and then years after that they just moved away from it you know they moved away from from uh, electromechanical and it it just became all just like everything you know computers came through then and and everything everything changed what do you what was it about so we're in the 70s when it changed was it the 80s that kind of pushed pinball into a different era like really just said okay this is the cuz you said that once mechanical circuit board circuit boards were put into machines and never looked back like pinball machines from the late 70s into the 80s are the way we know pinball machines today besides some really new modern looks to pinball which I'm going to talk about later um what was the 80s yeah. like what was the culture for pinballs in the 80s well, the the 80s weren't were not good for pinball because of the arcade games. So so basically Right, which I have I here. Would, I have this video which is basically the arcades in the 80s. And you're saying mm -hmm. arc yeah, the arcade cabinet started to come into life and that became a bigger right. thing and people were more intrigued by playing arcade machines than they were pinball. Oh yeah. So what did pinball and, and, do to try to combat that desire or is it well, was did they just like decide to put their hands up and say, we're just going to live with them? Yeah, a, co a couple of things. So so the if I was a, a location owner of an arcade game, like say in 1981, and I had, you know, Pac-Man and can't come out and they somebody wanted a pinball machine in that the area. I wanted to put a Pac-Man machine. You could put two pac-man machines in the same area that one pinball machine would go and oh right you could, you could have well pac-man pac-man is two player and only has one stick but you could have people playing they're you know they're only playing one at a time whereas if you had a two-player game simultaneous you could make double the profit and that's why pinball lost out uh you know that's why it kind of took a back seat for a while uh, in the 80s and then it kind of resurrected in the, in the ni early 90s. Two machines um, in place of one. Makes sense. Makes sense. That's what Jan yeah, just said. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, look, the 80s was a huge time for arcade arcading and like all the wonderful arcade machines that came out. Um, so I can imagine pinball took kind of like a back seat in the 80s. But... There's an error that was really important to me, Jody. I'm yeah. a kid of the I'm a kid of the 80s and mm -hmm. I like to say I grew up in the 80s as a kid and I went to high school in the early 90s. So what does that tell you that I was a kid going to the arcade in the 90s? But what let's talk about now that we're kind of going to get out of the 80s, how mm -hmm. amazing was 90s pinball and why did 90s pinball really really help the pinball industry? What what was it about that? Well, the end of the 80s, what saw the difference between 
just a regular pinball was okay steve ritchie is a really big pinball designer he made the the pinball williams high speed and that was the first pinball that was had like told a story it told a story it was it wasn't a big story it was just you you what was that from one? The what was that one at high speed high speed was where you where you're being chased by the police and you got to get away you go in the multi ball you got to hit the ramp the one ramp and then it and then you get away from the police basically so it told a story here it is and that and that from then on all all the pinball machines did that when by the time the 90s came out the rule sets uh you know and the um the you know they they had everything from uh movies to uh you know popular pop you know everything that was popular at the time and they you know would put it together and there were so many different companies doing so many different things and machines were selling like you said about one of your people from uh, said about the Adams family, that's the biggest selling machine uh, of all time. Modern machine. Why do you um, think the Adam, like people got so attached to the Adams family machine? Cause to be honest, it's one of my favorites too. Yeah. I, well, because of the way it was designed, Pat Lawler designed that. And I mean, it just had so many things going for it. It had that little hand, the thing hand that would come out and grab the pinball. It had all the the stuff from the show. The artwork was and incredible. It, the artwork used uh, Raul Julia's uh, likeness and uh, what was her name? Angelica Houston, who were in the movie. So it was actually right. based on the movie, right? It was the, yeah. the movie version of, of The Addams Family. As you can see, Raul Julia, rest in peace. Also, the best bow... Uh, the best M Bison that will ever grace the, oh, yeah. the, the silver screen uh, from the Street Fighter movie. But this machine, so we were talking about the 90s arcade. I remember going every arcade, Jody, in the 90s, every arcade. If you were going to open an arcade, you better have Adam's family sitting back there, right? This was oh, yeah. to me, and we're getting into the time where pinball meant a lot to me because I would play this in the Star Wars game. And do you know which one I'm talking about? The Star Wars game where you would always see that cartoon version of them shooting the Death Star, like pressing the button. There was like that sequence. And they like. That's the, I believe that's Data East uh, Star Wars. There was a lot of Star Wars that came out. There was a Data East version and there was, um, it wasn't called Star Wars. It was, it was called one of the movies, but I can't remember. There was a Williams version that came out in the, in the early 90s but yeah that was the, here it is the data like east star wars yeah this 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 one yeah. is so good and what's up mikey mikey my good buddy from tiktok a lot of tiktokers today popping in love it love it we had lost in the 80s and 90s and now mikey what's up mikey uh yeah man this game spoke to me like if anything it was so freaking cool it's still cool right these games oh, from yeah. the 90s still still are they're they're not aging they're they're just as good as they were, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. But dude. Yeah, and I mean, what? But what was it about the '90s? It was it the storytelling in the arcade machines doing more licensed pinball machines. Was that what really helped it? Because the '90s hit well, a license run with pinball. Right. They. I mean, they did that. Bally did that in the in the late '70s, early '80s with pop culture like Kiss and Dolly Parton and things like that. But and and that really was incredible. Like they they sold tons of machines. But in the '90s, yeah, it was it was about you know everything uh, from you know like Apollo 13 to Terminator 2 to Star Wars. Everything you know, all those uh, huge IPs had had pinball machines, and they had designers that were in just these incredible designers that have worked since the 70s and 60s on these games that were uh you know were making these and they were just doing incredible numbers incredible. and and just great work and and really attention to detail uh yawn i'm sorry um yawn said yes in high 
I think High Speed was one I enjoyed the most. I appreciated the storytelling aspect. It adds another dimension to the gameplay. And then Acid brought up a really good one, uh, Terminator, the pinball machine, which had the shotgun mm -hmm. handle plunger. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they did uh, They did that a lot. They did that. I'm trying to think. They did that with, uh, with that. They did it with Demolition Man. Uh, remember that movie? Yeah, I saw. Uh, they, I actually had, did a video on TikTok with the Demolition uh, Pinball Machine, Demolition Man Pinball. Oh, uh, cool! All right. It had the uh, two the two guns as as flippers. Right, and last I think Last Action Hero even had one, and I'm sure there's others. I just can't I can't think of them. And then Jody, we can't not talk about pinball without mentioning that pinball also had a good run on a digital format like space cadet oh, yeah. 3d 3d this is one of right. the first kind of 3d versions of pinball taking the love of pinball and putting it into a digital you know medium like even the nes pinball game you know like let's make pinball a digital thing do you have any remembering mm -hmm. of this like this was i actually played 3d pinball space cadet a lot and this was a fun game. Do you remember this game at all? Oh, yeah. I played that on Windows a lot. Uh, I played pinball, NES pinball. I had that. I loved the way they made that with the Pauline stage, the hidden Pauline stage. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I played a ton of this on, you know, and, and then even now, even now you can get old tables. On digital American. format. As digital right, format. you can get them on Pinball Arcade, you can get them on Zen Pinball, uh, particularly Williams tables are on Zen Pinball, but uh, Pinball Arcade you can get. And uh, yeah. Mikey says, I love Star Wars Pinball and Kiss Pinball. I remember this, came on Windows. That's right, Mikey, it came with Windows, you had Solitaire, you had Minesweeper, and then if you were lucky, you also had the Space Cadet as well. Um, but yeah, yep. man, it's really cool that like, I don't want to say it's like, preserving pinball but seeing pinball in a digital format i actually really enjoyed like the sega saturn for instance which i'm a big saturn person had a, a couple of really great pinball games on it um and you would use the bumpers as the as the flappers you know um oh yeah and moving along uh i pulled up some other games that were really fantastic in a digital oh, format yeah. you cannot talk about pinball from a digital perspective without talking about pokemon pinball uh, what a fantastic game this was! If you haven't played it, oh, I don't know if you did. Oh yeah, I have it. I I have it right, right over here. <laughs> How great was this game, man? How great was it? It was game? great. I, I I absolutely loved that game. That and and I did I did also love uh, uh Mario three or Mario Land pinball. I, I think let that me pull was that one. up. Yeah, Mario that, Land was, that was more, I think a lot of people don't like that one, but I, I did. I think it was on Advance. Yeah, here it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. That I mean, I I liked it. A lot of people don't like it. I can understand why they don't like it. Uh, it, it is a little different, but uh, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, I think that was kind of like. I feel like all these digital games for pinball was just like a love affair and, and saying like, let's make pinball fun in a digital way. And there was games that were great, um, you oh, know, yeah. just as digital pinball machines. Um, mm -hmm. Here's another one. We got Game Boy uh, Kirby Pinball Land, which is one I've been looking for. And honestly, if you haven't played this one, this one's great. I remember being in the car rides with my parents playing this in the back for hours on oh, yeah. car rides. So Here's one. I don't know if you connected with this one. And by the way, Kirby Pinball is very affordable. You can get this for a pretty good price, like 11 bucks or something. Like, I'm pretty sure it's not expensive. Wow. Um, and then Mike says, oh, my God, pinball video games. Yes, Nintendo Pinball. Devil's Curse. Devil's Curse is a very good one. Let's pull that one up. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, yep. is, that is – is it Devil's Curse or Devil's Crush? It's it, That was on Turbo Graphics. Oh, right. Uh, I think it was – Crush. I think it was two different games. Though. Were they? Well, no. Okay, let's let's do. I can't remember. I honestly, I can't because I never had a Turbo Graphics. But Devil's I Crush was, was super two. good. Whoa, this game was so good. Here it is. This game is so freaking good. Wow. I don't have this game. I wish I did. 
Um, I have a Turbo Graphics, so I need to. I really need to think about finding this one. Um, That's expensive. I, I believe. Uh, yes, are- this one is not yeah. cheap. Yes, this one is expensive. But man, this is just like really cool because we've never really talked about pinball on my show. It's crazy that we've gone this long without talking about how important this was because pinball. Yes, it was pinball. But look, look at all the variations of pinball that was turned into a digital format. There's so many classics we could talk about. Let's pull up. The NES pinball, which was like the famous cover with the guy carrying like the right. pinball NES. I don't think I have this one either, and it's one I probably need to get for my collection. That's a cheap one. Yeah, I, th- I thought I so. I paid like dollars for it. So amazing, though. Like, just look at that. It's 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 turning pinball digitally. And I, I thought it would be fun to talk about how, how these hap- how these were created, how all these fun. And even today, I think there's still some really interesting um, digital versions. Like you said, you could play old pinball machines on a digital format now. Um, yeah. Yep. Dragon's Fury, uh, which is one I don't think I remember, but let's check it out. Uh, that's one that uh, Mikey's recommending. Oh, here it is. Dragon's Fury, which looks like Dev- Devil's Crush a little bit. Oh, yeah. I've, I've seen that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. By Tension. So freaking cool. Um, So let's talk about the 90s again a little bit before we we're getting close to the end of the show. Okay. I pulled up a list of just like top 10 90s pinball machines. So Lethal Weapon 3, which is one I played. Uh, Star Wars, okay. which we talked about. This is the one we just mm. talked about. Fun House. Oh, yeah. That's that's yeah, a good that's one. one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. Star Trek The Next Generation, 1993. Great one. Yeah. Yep. Uh, another one is Indiana Jones Pinball Adventure, 1993. Great one as well. Uh, oh, yeah. Really fantastic, especially around the time I think Last Crusade came out and stuff like that. Um, number five I have here is The Getaway, High Speed 2. So this is a sequel yeah, to High Speed. Sequel. Right. Yeah. Fishtails. I played Fishtails. All right. All right. That's a good one. Uh, Terminator 2 Judgment Day, which we talked about, 1991. Right. Man, now I want to get some pinball games in my basement. Me too, Mikey. Twilight Zone. <laughs> Twilight Zone is up there with Adam's Family, in my opinion. I, I thought Twilight Zone was fantastic. Um, the rule set on, on that game. Uh, and, and the amount of things you can do with that game is just in- incredible. Uh, there's so many different, different like uh, hidden and and different things that go on with that game. Uh, that I mean, it's it's incredible. The the designers that made that, and that was made at a time where I think there was like there was like three or four hugely hit games. Uh, pin, uh, pinball tables that came out that year and it was it was quite a summer i remember going to ocean city and seeing that and all the other games lined up and uh you know uh, did you ever go down the wildwood in south jersey i did but it was when i was very i was like too young so and many i, I always go to ocean city uh maryland is where I dude in wildwood because i'm a jersey guy originally wildwood would have all the awesome beach arcades and oh, yeah. and and there were tons of pinball machines and um, there's this really great arcade barcade in L.A. called 82 and they have a they have what's cool about 82 is they have a whole section of arcade cabinets but then they have a whole room of pinball machines which is really freaking cool love seeing oh, cool. love seeing like like arcades really appreciate pinball um, but let's I, before we're out there's a couple more things I wanted to talk about. And there's a game here, which I don't think a lot of people talk enough about, which is very expensive to find. It's called Metroid Pinball, Metroid Prime Pinball. Did you ever play Metroid Prime Pinball? I did emulate it. Uh, uh, I have. I actually have it on my phone. Dude. <laughs> so, such... It's fun. It's, you can play it with, with just touch controls. It's, it's very easy to play. It's really so freaking good. And I want this game. I've been it's on my list of a game I need to find, but it's very expensive. I think complete in box is like two hundred fifty dollars or something. Um it's wow. it's very valuable. You know Metroid, Metroid Prime, anything Metroid is, oh, yeah. is getting pricey, but 
a game that I don't think a lot of people remember, and it's uh, one that I loved. But now that we're in the future, I did want to mention that Stern created a game on Oculus called Stern Pinball Arcade VR, where you can actually uh, go into like a virtual arcade and play these <laughs> play these pinball machines. And that's kind of like the cool factor now is like, wow, I can relive these games in VR now. Um, let me get... And, and there's a lot of great ones, and there's a lot of newer ones in here. And uh, it's a game that I have I have an Oculus, and I've been playing, where you can actually feel like you're in an arcade playing pinball in a VR fashion. Um, so it's, like, super cool. I don't know if you knew anything about VR pinball, but it's a thing, man. I did not. No, I didn't. Yeah, dude. Is that on Oculus? Yeah, it's on Oculus. Yeah, it's by Oculus. Uh, it's my son has one. I'll have, to, I'll have to steal him. Look at this. You're like literally playing pinball <laughs> in v VR. So it's like super, super that's neat. That's crazy. The future, yeah, man. That's... Yeah, Stern Pinball. Stern Pinball really brought pinball back to like, uh, you know, after 99, people thought pinball was dead. and It's not going really anywhere, man. No. So today, no. before we did the podcast, I posted a tweet and I said, what's your favorite pinball game of all time? So I wanted to pull up some yeah. people's favorite pinballs. So David pulled up Attack on Mars or Attack uh, Mars. Att oh, no, it's Attack. Is Attack from Mars? Attack from Mars. Uh, you, attack from Mars. Yeah. You put up this one, Super Mario Brothers. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Look at that one, man. A lot of people man. don't like that game, but... Uh... Uh, I do. I that's my favorite because and of Mario. Here's another one, Medieval Madness, which is a great one that was put up by David. Thanks, David. Another person put the same one you recommended. Awesome. Wow. Tales of Arabian Night was that one? I don't know. I'm not mm -hmm. familiar. Uh, Devil's that was made by Williams. Nice. So Devil's Crush by Michael. Uh, another person brought up Space Cadet. Another another person brought up Space Cadet. Uh, another third person brought up Space Cadet. I guess it was super popular. Adam's Family, another medieval madness. Uh, this one is Creature from the Black Lagoon. Nice. Oh yeah. Uh, pinball Fantasy Stones and Bones Table. Ooh, that's a good one. Sonic Pinball. Hmm. South Park Pinball. Oh it, yeah. Uh, this person wrote. Oh, nice. So this person wrote, oh, man, I wouldn't know where to begin, but the table I slashed a lot of dough in was the 1996 Tales of Arabian Nights, which was mentioned mm -hmm. earlier. Sonic Pinball. We didn't talk about Sonic Pinball. Good one. <clears throat> I, had that, I had that game. Zach Payne says from Twitter, the only two I put any significant time in is Space Cadet 1 on Microsoft Windows and Kirby Pinball Game from the original Game Boy. I go with Space Cadet 1, although there was uh, a few fun actual arcade cabinets called House of Pain, and I love it because of my name. Uh, that makes sense, Zach Payne. Nice. Thanks for the ad here on Twitter. <laughs> Twilight Zone, 80s Pinbot and 90s Adams Family from uh, Chris here. Uh, Truth says T2. Uh, fish tales from another person. Pinball. Look at all this love for pinball, Jody. Does this make you happy? Yeah. Oh yeah. Big time. Uh, uh, uh Nintendo asks, did you ever? Do you do competitive pinball, Jody? Do I? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, right now. Uh, I was thinking about doing. There's a there's a league up in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, which is about forty minutes now, thirty minutes from me. Uh, and if I had the time, I will, but, uh, yeah, right now I don't have the time, unfortunately, because of my work schedule. And that <clears throat> is a whole nother arena, right? Um, yeah. So I did want to say something, Jody, uh, as we're towards the end of the show and thanks so much for joining me today. I'm actually mm -hmm. going to Las Vegas. Uh, me and my girlfriend are heading over there literally an hour from now. I live in LA just so people know it's the four hour drive, but guess what, Jody, I'm going to the the awesome pinball arcade in las vegas nevada um That's what do you awesome. know about this place because i'm super stoked first of all it's free to enter but it's not only pinball jody from what i understand they have tons of cabinets like arcade cabinets it's a huge arcade and i just cannot 
wait to do some content from here. But Jody, isn't the timing perfect to do this episode and then go to the pinball machine museum? I think tomorrow I will be at the pinball museum. So check out my TikTok, my Twitter, my Instagram. We're going to be posting some content from the museum itself. I'm going to be streaming live at the pinball museum as well on TikTok. Um, uh, so dude, First of all, the one cool thing about the pinball machine uh, museum, Jody, is there's a huge sign outside of it that says pinball. How cool is yeah. that? Just so you That's don't cool. forget where you are. You are going to the pinball <laughs> museum. <laughs> right. Isn't that cool? Look at that. It's so that neat. That is, yeah. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, they have a – I've never been there yet, uh, but they have – I know they have a team of people that take care of those. It's a volunteer. It's it, all based on volunteering. It's all volunteer. Yeah. And when you're there, just, just check out, you know, if, if somebody's cleaning one, check, check the inside out because what's under the play field is just as cool as what's on it. What's you in know it, what yeah. I mean? Oh, this looks like when they were building it. Wow. It's a huge place. Yeah. I'm surprised. It's, I didn't know it was free to enter. So it's free to that. enter all the machines when you put, you have to put money in the machines, but all that goes to donations towards keeping the upkeep of the uh, arcade. Also, all the employees God. at the pinball arcade are volunteer. There's no paid employees. It's all wow. volunteer based, which, which is very important, right? A museum we got to preserve these games and it, there's no better way to preserve them by putting money in the play them and that money going back into preserving them. Right. How cool is that, man? That's so freaking cool. Um, so if, yeah. if you want to check out tomorrow, uh, just look around my socials. I'm going to be posting a lot of content from the pinball museum. And also uh, just a shout out, we are going to be visiting a retro game store called retro, uh, City Games in Las Vegas, which I heard is really cool. Uh, so shout out to them. I'm going to be stopping by. I already talked to the owner and told him I'm going to be coming by to shoot there. Uh, this guy apparently has a bunch of really cool stuff. Oh, I don't like the graded games, but I am going to go check it out. Um, so stay tuned for that. Las Vegas, we're going to Pinball Museum, doing a lot of stuff. Uh, but Jody, man... It's been freaking fantastic walking down pinball uh, history. And by the way, Mikey says he loves your content on Twitter. Uh, really, really, uh -huh. really cool stuff, man. Um, and and Nintendork, we met on Twitter, right? That's like kind of where we started as friends. So please, yeah. Oh, yeah. putting his Twitter in chat. We're going to be posting the VOD of this episode um, and it will be on YouTube and I will share that as soon as it's up after the show. So if you missed the live, no problem. And hello to everyone on VOD land. Thanks for joining the show, watching it on VOD as well. I want to thank everyone for coming by today. Jody, give me a little bit of uh, feedback. How did you, how did you feel today? Uh, are you, are you happy you came on? I think we had a lot of fun, man. It was really cool. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I am. I, I mean, I was, uh, I've never been on a podcast before. So, uh, yeah, I had a little bit of butterflies, but it's all right, man. It's it, just, was, it was great. It was great. Dude, it wasn't, it wasn't bad at all. It's just shooting the shit on my podcast, man. That's all it is. That's all it oh. is. This is a bunch of gamers shooting the shit, right? Um, right. that being said, we're going to raid, um, we're going to raid actually a buddy of mine. His name is Cake Rins. A really cool guy. Let's let's raid this guy. Let me get his channel. Because before we leave today, we are going to raid someone. Um, but again, thanks everyone for stopping by. We're going to be back next Saturday. We got a bunch of stuff coming up. We got a bunch of guests coming up. I'm really, really stoked. Um, my computer's running really slow right now. Here we go. Uh, but I want to thank everyone. And remember, check out all my socials below. Uh, you can go to my Twitter, my TikTok. There's stuff all over the place, all my content. But most importantly, you'll see we're going to have the full episode of the podcast available on YouTube shortly. Uh, Jody, again, thanks so much, man. It was really a pleasure to have you. Let's give Kakerins uh, a little love. He's, uh, he's a guy that we're going to raid right now. And Jody, we'll see you next time. See ya. All right, let's raid. Raid and then...